Hey all and welcome to Paint It Plastic People. My name is Charles and I help aspiring and beginner miniature painters learn to save time and money by teaching them to paint fast and effective. And uh, this video, we're doing something a little different. I'm just gonna be going over the different uh, things you need to actually paint the miniatures. Uh, first off, I'm gonna be talking about uh, the absolute bare bones essentials. Uh, do not mind if the camera shakes a little bit here and there. Producer Spike is just off screen here being a nuisance. But I don't have the heart to throw him out. So he's just going to be here bugging everybody. And then I'm going to go on to some stuff that like I highly recommend. Stuff that will just make uh, your life painting a miniature that much easier. So without further ado, let's start off. First thing you need to do when you're painting a miniature is you need a miniature. Obviously, uh, you can get miniatures, you know, obviously if you're into this hobby, you're painting some sort of miniature. Uh, <laughs> you know, you either have an idea, like if you're doing like Games Workshop stuff, if you're doing Star Wars Legion, Talk Mask, uh, Talk Mask Games, Talk Mask Games is making Star Wars Legion now. Uh, but their other game, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, this guy's from Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid. This is Psycho Blue. Um, so there's also board game miniatures you can be painting. So you need a miniature. Pure and simple. Next thing you need to do if you're going to paint a miniature, you need paint. So uh, I use a combination of Citadel, uh, Vallejo, uh, Vallejo paints, and Army Painter paints. Uh, eventually, like I can't really tell you what paint is best because everyone has their own preferences. Um, for me, I just like to use a, a mass of different paints. Like I say, I use three different companies. A lot of people are like that. They just kind of like, oh, I like this color from this brand, this color from that brand. Uh, if you're just starting out, I recommend Vallejo. Um, they just have a lot of uh, very good consistent paints, uh, good quality paints. Uh, whereas you have something like Army Painter here. I really like Army Painter, but uh, the color, sorry, I should say the colors I like about Army Painter are good and I really do enjoy them, but the there are some like hit and miss ones. Like this metallic is like super runny. Like if I take the lid off the top of this thing, like that's just like really, really runny silver. I do like it though. It's a good silver, but it's just, uh, if you're not painting with it for a while, like if you have it in like a wet palette or something, it will separate. Like it's really prone to doing that. Uh, I think most metallics are kind of like that, but their army painter stuff really seems to want to do that. And even for like their, uh, regular paints as well. Uh, these little paints here are all contrast paints. Uh, this actual little holder thing, the, this is just an optional thing real quick, is uh, I think on Thingiverse is where you can get this. If you have a 3D printer, you can print one of these off. My uh, good friend of mine, Mike, uh, did that for me. Uh, but, you know, these are really good contrast paints. They can like kind of up your game a little bit, but um, they can up your game a bit. Blah, 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 blah. They can up your game a bit, or you can uh, uh, just use them for um, whatever. You know, if you have like use them as a wash substitute sometimes uh, if they're like uh, thin enough, or you can just use them. However, uh, I'll do a video about contrast paint specifically uh, down the road. But you know, you have a. Uh, so that has all sorts of different like regular base paints and stuff right? like that. But these are just some of the paints I use. I have like just off camera here, there's a ton of paints over there that I have access to. Mostly it is uh, Army Painter, uh, but the, because I bought like one of their 50 paint sets, but uh, there is some Citadel there and there is uh, uh, quite a bit of Alejo as well. Uh, what I should have said before paints was primer. <laughs> you do need primer. Uh, I use Rattlecam primer. If you haven't seen my video on how to prime a miniature, uh, you should go check that out. But you can get three different types of primer. You can get like paint on primer, uh, airbrush primer, and you can get uh, just like Rattlecam primer, which is what I use just because it's cheap. It's about like eight bucks. Um, we have a paw coming in. Um, <laughs> it's about eight bucks. He's thinking about smacking it. Uh, about eight bucks here in Canada. Uh, the, the, that one's black. I have white and gray I use as well. I tend to want to prime on white, um, though black is a good option as long as you're not painting on colors like brighter colors like red or yellow or something. That can really, really be a lot, lot more work than it has to be, unfortunately. All right. Uh, so from there, we need brushes. We also need producer Spike to uh, settle down a little. Hey, now, don't be slotting at them. 
so um so these are the different kind of brushes you can get like you can get like these sort of smaller like sort of kind of like come to a more of a point like i need new brushes by the way <laughs> but uh, you can get these kind of smaller to a point brushes yeah no none of that thank you <laughs> And you can get some of those. You can get some bigger ones, like Producer Spike has just pointed out. Um, you can get these flat head ones, which are really good for dry brushing. Uh, you can also get these sort of uh, makeup brushes, which if you haven't seen my dry brushing video, you should check that out as well. Where, like, I talk about how I, I prefer makeup brushes to dry head, or... Ugh, prefer makeup brushes to flat head brushes. There's nothing wrong with uh, flat head brushes. They get the job done. I, I still use them. But makeup brushes, for the most part, I, I think are superior. Uh, you can get all sorts of different sizes. As you can see, most of these are kind of like no-name craft store ones. This one here is from Army Painter. Uh, it's a like, Wargaming Regiment brush. Uh, you know, you can pick those up. The more like, uh, and this one here was is an old uh, Koloski era. What is it? Oh, it's an old Raphael brush. I thought it was like an old Rosemary and Co. Uh, but it's an old Raphael brush. It's been beat up over the years. Uh, what I recommend when, if you're going for brushes is that you do a combination of good brushes and brushes that aren't attacked by cats, uh, but brushes that are, you know, new, good quality brushes and you have to keep a supply of old brushes around because your old brushes are going to do a lot of your, uh, your work. Uh, your old brushes are going to be doing a lot of the, uh, heavy lifting, whereas the detailed brushes, the good ones you're going to be keeping around are going to be doing more of the, uh, more of the fine work, more of the highlightings, things like that. So when you're like mixing paints, laying down base coats, maybe wet blending, things like that, you want old brushes. When you're doing like highlights, you're trying to get details, you're trying to do those really fine things. That's when you go for like the more detailed brushes. Uh, most of my brushes I get from uh, Michael's, it's a craft store around here. Uh, I'm sure there's Michael's around everywhere. Or, I don't know if there is Michaels in the States. Let me know in the comments below. But, you know, any craft store, uh, sometimes dollar stores have them as well. So you can get them some for cheap. But, of course, the cheaper you go, the lower the quality is. Uh, after that, you need a wet, you don't need a wet palette. But you do need a palette of some sort. This is my wet palette. Uh, I got this again. This was at a Michaels. This was a, it says right on it, it was a photo case. You can use a Tupperware dish as well for making wet palettes. And I'm going to do a video on making, making wet palettes. Producer Spike just attacked my wet palette. That's why it's looking like this. Uh, it needs thrown out anyway, uh, the inside bit of it. But this is a wet palette. You can get a dry palette as well. They're, um, you can get like the little ones where they got little divot wells in them. Those are great. Uh, you should clean them out after you're done every time. Uh, I use a wet palette though because a lot of the time I'm not doing a painting session all in one go. I'm not painting like one miniature start to finish. Uh, oftentimes I don't have a lot of time on my hands. So I'm like maybe paint for like an hour or two, come back to this later. That's where a wet palette is really great. And I will be making a video on how to make a wet palette later on because you can make these things super cheap. You can make them super cheap. They don't cost a lot of money. You can use a lot of the stuff that are just like around your house to do this. So we'll be doing a video a little bit later on that, but you do need a palette of some sort. Uh, next up, you need to be have, well, you need to be, you need to have some sort of water around and you need something to hold that water for when you're cleaning off your brushes. Uh, this here is a Citadel water pot. Uh, complete with still water inside. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I picked this up because I was trying to say, extend the life of my brushes because um, as you can see on the bottom, there's like little grooves in it that you can like help wash the paint out of your brush. And these little divots on the side, you can bring your brush back up to a point as well. So that's really good for that. Um, I think in on the Canada version of Games Workshop website, this was about 10, $13. You don't have to get something like this. This is just something because I paint so much and whatnot. And I want to, again, extend the life of my brushes. I picked this up. You can just use an old mug or uh, like a solo cup or something like a disposable cup or whatever, like whatever you want. You can get that on the cheap and just use that instead. Uh, but if you, if you have some like good quality brushes and stuff and you want to make sure they stick around for a long time, 
this would be a way to go. But you don't, again, you don't have to do that. Uh, and sort of my last thing on absolutely essential stuff is you need some sort of uh, sealant or varnish. Uh, this here is what I use again. It's a rattle can. You can get the same sort of uh, varnishes uh, as you would from like, as you would primers. So you can get a paint on, you can get a uh, airbrush sealant and you can get a uh, rattle can varnish. Again, same rules apply in my opinion. Rattle can is just cheaper, easier to get a hold of, lasts longer. You can cover more miniatures at a time with it versus like paint on or airbrush. Uh, yeah, just easier access and all that good stuff. Though I do have, um, I don't have it right with me now, uh, but I do have like paint on prime or paint on sealers, like art coat where I can put on selected like gloss finishes to miniatures. And I do that a lot with my power rangers. I will gloss their helmets and make their helmets shinier than the rest of them. And you can do different effects like that with them as well. So, um, you can be tactical like that. It's pretty cool. But for like absolute essential, you only need like a can of this, like a can of mat. And if you haven't seen my basing and varnishing uh, video, go check that out to hear a little bit more about that. So the last thing up on, um, this is sort of, for a lot of you, this is gonna be essential tools, but for some of you, this isn't going to be essential tools. And what I mean is you need like some clippers here and uh, some like sort of uh, modeling tools. So these are all I have. I just bought these from Citadel. Uh, you can get cheaper versions of this. Like you probably go down to a hardware store and get something like this and you probably use something for this. For This is like a mold line remover. This is meant to clip miniatures out of a sprue. Um, that's why I say this isn't necessarily essential for everybody because you might be a miniature painter that's only interested in painting miniatures from your board games which they come pre-assembled. So you don't need this, right? You may want this, some of the stuff, like you may want like a mold line remover for that kind of thing. Uh, you can also get stuff like files. You can get stuff like sandpaper and stuff to kind of smooth out rough portions of your miniature where you're like clipping and such. There's all sorts of uh, tools like that. But for me, uh, these have been the only things I've needed so far. Just some mold line, just some mold line removers, just some uh, clippers. Um, like I said, Citadel is where I picked these ones up from. If you're into stuff like Warhammer, Star Wars Legion, um, uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol, and like a plethora of other games where miniatures come on sprues, you are going to need this stuff. And you're also going to need some sort of glue as well. I use, a, I just use some super glue. You can get a glue specific, oh, sorry, Spike. Um, you can get some like miniature specific stuff such as like uh, glue that'll actually kind of like melt the plastic and bond it together. You get a nice tighter bond. I just use super glue. It works fine enough for me. Uh, I have no real problems with it. You just want to make sure your super glue will adhere to plastic. And, and again, you can pick that up anywhere. Like I got that at Walmart. Like, you know, you can get that wherever. That's just something nice and cheap. But this kind of stuff, um, it's essential for some of you, probably a lot of you. And, um, the other stuff, let's see, there we go. <laughs> and then like for some, and for the rest of you, it might not be as essential. So that's that's that kind of stuff as well. So now from here on out, oh crap. Uh, uh, from here on out, we're gonna be talking about stuff that's absolutely just quality of life stuff. This is just stuff that's like, you know, you don't really, really need this, but having it is, having it is gonna help make your miniature painting that much easier. So we're gonna start off with this kind of stuff. This is uh, sticky tack. Uh, sticky tack, you can get like wall mounting tack as well. That'll work as well. Um, basically what you're gonna do with this stuff is you're gonna do a couple things. You can take something like, I have. A, I use this, this as like a priming sort of thing. I, I'll take a miniature and you just take a miniature like this and you kind of rub this stuff until it starts getting a little bit sticky. You know, stretching out and whatnot. And then you put it onto the base of the miniature like that. And then you just kind of stick them on. And like if I was to use this little square here uh, for priming, I would just take them outside. And now I don't have to worry, like, I wouldn't have to worry about him falling off. 
So when you're like getting different angles and stuff and trying to make sure you get the miniature completely coated, you don't have to worry about um, accidentally, you know, he slides off or the wind takes him or something like that, right? So that's, that's a really good thing to have. Going on from that is something to hold your miniature. Now when you paint, you can, like, like I said, bare bones. You can just hold the base and just kind of go. Um, and that is fine. I did that for a while until my hands just couldn't take it anymore. Oops. <laughs> Speaking of. Um, and um, it's just tough. Like when you hold a miniature like this, it's just kind of cramps your hand up in a hurry. And it's just rough. Whereas if you, like again, you take that sticky tack, you just stick it to something like this. And now that's a lot easier to hold. And you can also turn it a lot easier. You can get better angles. You can like turn it upside down, flip them around, whatever you need to do to get that proper, you know, hold on the miniature. Now these ones I got, again, I got a four pack for I think $8 from, uh, again, that Michael's craft store. I think they're meant to hold like pills or something like that for, uh, you know, if you, you have to take morning medication or something. Or I think it's either that or they meant to hold like photos or something. I can't remember. It's been so long since I got these. But um, that's where I, got, I picked them up from. It was about $2 a piece for like a four pack. Uh, so like eight bucks for the four of them. Uh, if you're painting like a bunch of miniatures, this is really great because you, if you have a bunch of these, because then you can just be like, okay, I'm done with you, set you down, go and grab the next guy, come back in, like, and you don't have to like take one off, put set them down, grab the other guy, apply him back on, you know, you can just leave them, right? And again, like showcasing from like when I talk about like sticking this guy to, to this for priming, like you can see like, like that ain't, like I'm shaking them. He is rattling a little bit there. He finally came loose, but I had to do a decent amount of shaking to get him out of there. So like, just kind of like offhand, like slapping and whatnot. Actually, I have some of that stuck to the bottom of this so that when I'm filming, I have something to kind of target. And so that's that's one way you can go. This, this, I, I can't recommend the sticky tack plus this enough. You know, it's just such a lifesaver. It's going to save your hand so much trouble. It's going to make it painting, long painting sessions seem so much easier. Cannot recommend that enough, though not essential. Another thing, now this isn't necessarily for everybody, but paper clips. So you see something like, I have my dropper tops here. Sometimes they will, at the top, they will kind of uh, get a little bit of a dry up and clog up. That's a problem. So what you can do is you can take a paper clip, just kind of stretch it out a little bit like this, and then just, you know, jam her in there and that'll like clear it up. And you just pluck out that blockage and you're good to go again. That may not apply to everybody because not everybody uses dropper tops. Some people are like, they commit the Citadel like it's a religious endeavor. And that's fine. Like those, uh, those little flip up tops, the pots, they're, they're great. Problem is, if you don't have something like this to hold them, you can very easily knock them over and you lose like half a pot. Especially like a wash, like Nolan oil or something like that. It can just be brutal. Um, but yeah, that's what you can use paper clips for. You can use it for all sorts of other stuff. Like if you want to do like superficial marking on a miniature, like you could just kind of go in and like kind of slight, kind of give like a quick little like scratch there and kind of give a superficial mark just to give a little more interest to your miniature. Give it that little bit, that little bit much more detail. Well, that's what you can use paper clips for as well. Uh, like this was like a pack of like hundred or fifty or something. I can't remember. And it was like four bucks, three bucks Canadian. Got that at Walmart. Like, and as long as I don't lose the package of them, like that's gonna last me for a long, long time. Oh, a long, long time. Uh, next up is we'll do some basing material. So you can get this stuff. This is Vallejo's uh, Earth Texture. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, I use this. This is I've had this for a long, long time now. Um, I, I've used this on like pretty much all my Star Wars Legion miniatures, if not all of them. Uh, just like it doesn't like this. It's great. Like it just it's 
wonderful. And I think I picked it up for about maybe 10 or $20 on Amazon. I can't remember. But uh, there's all sorts of different ones you can get that Vallejo makes. There's all sorts of other companies that also make this kind of stuff. Just kind of do a little bit of research on that. Um, every company makes some different. And they do different types. Like this is like their earth texture. They do like a dark earth. Uh, they do kind of like a sand texture. They do um, snow effects, water effects, all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, Citadel also does some. They do the um, their technical paints. They have some stuff that's where you put like mud on, or you can put on like this paint, like uh, where it like kind of cracks as it dries, which gives a really cool effect. This is something I use for spreading this sort of texture on. It's a little scoop Citadel made. You can get you can pay for this like like i did like a chump uh but you, <laughs> you know if you want to get something official you know or if you're just trying to get like up to free shipping go for it <laughs> but um but you could probably get away with using like like something like a like a popsicle stick or something like that you could probably get away with using that on the, for this kind of stuff but basically what you do is you'd scoop up you go into this, you'd scoop up some of the texture and then just kind of spread it on. Uh, the good thing with this Citadel one is that the opposite end is skinnier, so you can get into like tighter areas with this one than you can with that. And so that's pretty cool. It's pretty sexy. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, again, don't have to pick up that. You especially don't have to pick up that if you don't have like basing texture to put on. Uh, but same principle applies. Use this for their like te instead of those technical paints. So you can use this with the Vallejo stuff, like I, I was showing there. Uh, next up is these sort of tufts of grass. This is from Gamers Grass. Uh, this was like actually a, like a four pack. Um, I think it was like thirteen dollars Canadian. I picked it up for. Uh, you can pick these up like online. Um, you know, if you have like a store online that you go to frequently that like that sells uh, board game miniatures that show that sells uh, board gaming miniatures, chances are they sell stuff like this as well. So you can pick this stuff up. This is like thirteen dollars for this. I use this on most all of my Star Wars Legion miniatures, and that's like two core sets. Uh, one of that's like two core sets, and then like a bunch of leader characters. So like that's done me pretty well. Um, you can use that as much as you want. If you're gonna be getting that stuff though, I recommend you also pick up some tweezers. You can just pull them off with your fingers, but you might like do more damage that way. Plus with the tweezers, you can kind of get a little more like specific and stuff and where your fingers kind of can't get in at. Uh, tweezers are also really good if you are like me and you have somebody like producer Spike uh, and you have cat hair. Yeah, sometimes you'll see a stray cat hair that you can't get at and you just kind of come in with the tweezers and just pluck that out of there. Um, yeah, so I recommend picking that up. Or if there's just like hair from you, like as well, you can just kind of get in there and like doop, snap that off of there. Um, so that's, again, um, you don't need this stuff uh, to paint a miniature. You don't, it's not essential, but this can really add some, oops, some extra cool, cool, cool effects to your miniatures. You can also get like rocks and stuff. Like uh, I, I mentioned in my basing video, if you haven't checked that out, um, that, you can get like, like I have cats. It's a cat litter, cat litter. Don't use the used cat litter. <laughs> use the fresh cat litter that nobody's gotten into yet. Uh, you can also pick up like uh, rocks from like aquariums as well. That's another good way to go. Next up is a sponge. This sponge is a bit hairy and gross. So uh, probably don't wanna be uh, doing that. You probably wanna clean it off first. This is an old sponge. I probably should just get a new one. Anyway, uh, what you do is, like you can see, I cut out a hunk here, and that's what you want to do. You want to cut out a piece of this, and you can kind of, like, dry brushing, you can create sort of, like, splashes of, like, damage on a miniature, whether that be, like, dirt effects or, like, you know, if you splash on some metallics onto, like, a robot or something or some power armor or something, and kind of make it look like there's these, like, damage where the paint's been chipped away over the years of fighting and such. Um... Yeah, just something like that. Just like kind of cut that out, get a weird shape in there, and then use that to get some like damage effects, some weathering effects. You know, I'll be going more in depth in that in a future video um, and talking about that kind of stuff. Like these very minimalistic things you can do to give your miniature interest, to give your miniature 
uh, this really cool look and like a really fast, easy way and a really uh, cheap way as well. So that would be that. The last thing I have for you, and this absolutely isn't essential at all, but this is something that um, maybe for if you're an older person getting into this hobby and your eyesight's kind of going on you, or maybe your eyesight's just going on you in general, but uh, this thing here, this is an eyeglass headset. Um, it has a light on it as well. I don't usually use the light. My uh, friend Adam though, he has one of these as well. And he, he says the light's great. So he says it's like he's got young eyes again. He's a, he's a bit older than I am. But uh, anyway, there's like a little light you can see on the front here. Mine doesn't have any batteries in it. Um, Cause you can put like batteries like right here at the top, right? I think it just takes like two double A's or something, or maybe three. No, uh, looks like two, two triple A's rather. Okay. Um, but anyway, you just mount this on. Uh, this one's pretty cool. This one's on Amazon. You can use either like these, like the glasses looking parts or there's a strap that you can put on as well. Uh, so what you do is you take these things here. These are like the magnifying glass parts. I'll just take this off for a second. I'll probably do like a full review of this at some point, but you take out one of these, it's like a little magnifying glass. Just kind of hook it into the front here. I don't know if you can see that or very well or not. And uh, you just put it on and like you can just get into those like little details. And it's like having a magnifying glass. Uh, it also like adjusts. So like if you're using it and you're like, oh, I don't need it now, you can flip that up. Or you can like adjust it to where whatever angle's comfortable for you, of course. Um, I'm, uh, as I've discovered, I am nearsighted. So I don't use this a whole, whole lot, but if there are some like really, really fine details, I will go after it. It also comes with this handy dandy cloth as well. Oh, excuse me. Uh, it comes with that handy dandy cloth as well. It, that helps out like you, so you can clean it up, make sure this is maintained well. This, I think, was $20, I think, is all I paid for this. Just, you know, if you're getting up there, maybe not even getting up there, your eyesight's just kind of not helping you out as much as it used to, you could pick up one of these. It'll just kind of, like, it'll turn back the clock from what I've heard. I'm, I'm nearsighted, so, like, this just kind of, like, amplifies that, so my eyesight's even better up close. But, again, for somebody where your vision's kind of, not as strong as it used to be. This would be a good purchase. Oh, Producer Journey has joined us. Hopefully he doesn't decide to get on the table. But luckily this is the end of the video as well. So if you like this, um, please leave a like down below. Um, you can share it with anyone else that's just getting into miniature painting. Maybe they don't know what they should be getting, what kind of supplies and stuff they should be after. Um, dangling cat hairs everywhere. Uh, <laughs> You know, leave a comment down below if, if the, some of the stuff was uh, helpful to you, if some of the stuff is things you're going to be picking up now. Um, uh, you know, share it with somebody. That really helps out a lot. It helps out the channel a lot. If you have uh, any ideas for a future video topic, you know, you want to learn a bit about something, let me know in the comments below. I always love to read that kind of stuff. I, I, I do love to hear about, you know, someone wants to know about something, wants to know about more stuff. I love helping people out. So just, uh, if you enjoyed this, just leave a like and remember to, <laughs> and remember to get it to the table and have a good day.